A house of prayer on the top of a mountain, hundreds of trees, and a vineyard. All this and much more is part of a farm in the heart of Judea. It's located in what much of the world calls the West Bank, and its founders see it as a fulfillment of biblical prophecy. Chris Mitchell brings us this first-hand look. On these hills, not far from Jerusalem, lies the Aragot Farm. For six years, its founders have built a complex on land where previously there was nothing but barren hills. Located in Judea, its founders see the place as the Bible coming to life. CBN News met with two of its founders, Ari Abramowitz and Jeremy Gimpel. Well, tell us where we are. We're in the heart of the land of Judea. Um, Bethlehem is about 15 minutes that way. Right over there, as those buildings kiss the sky, that's Jerusalem. 45 minutes directly this way is Hebron. And if you triangulate that, Bethlehem, Jerusalem, and Hebron, and you bring it right here, we are in the heart of the land of Judea. Gimpel talks about the connection to King David. And as a young boy, David would take his sheep out and pasture his sheep in these lands. And according to the Jewish tradition, most of the book of Psalms was written here in these mountains before David became king. So in his time of trouble, where did he run to? To the place that he knew best. He knew where the caves were. He knew where the water holes were. He knew how to live here. He knew how to survive here. These are historic holy mountains. Mm -hmm. The UN and many countries consider the mountains where David wrote the Psalms occupied territory and see the Jews who lived there in a place they call the West Bank as an obstacle to peace. And why do they call it the West Bank? Because it's much easier to say, Let's get the settlers out of the West Bank. Then let's remove the Jews from Judea, right? The reason Jews are called Jews is because we're from Judea. This is our indigenous land. The first Jew that was called a Jew was Mordechai, the Jew, but he was from the tribe of Benjamin. So why was he called a Jew? Because he was exiled from Judea. So this is the most natural, holistic place for a Jew to actually grow and thrive right here in Judea. Local leaders asked these farmers to settle the land to create a tourist attraction and a strategic buffer. It's become much more. When I came out here, after just a few weeks, all of the strategy and the military, none of that mattered at all. So for me, I think for Jeremy too, when we came out here, it's like, this is what it is to be a Jew. Maybe not for every Jew, but for us out here, this is just the place where it's like, oh, this is just the most natural thing that could ever possibly happen. Both Ari and I felt called to come here and then pave this road and open the place up where the Psalms were written. I mean, imagine that. King David taught every Catholic in the world, every Christian in the world, every Jew in the world. When someone is sick, they open up the book of Psalms and he taught us all how to pray to God. And those prayers entered the world here. So this place is meant to be a center for prayer and worship and song and music and art and Torah that's open to everyone from every background. One common perception about this land is that Jews and Arabs can't coexist. That's not the case here. And now if you go to our Bedouin village near us, an Arab village over there, and you say to them, what do you think of these Jews here? They will say they are beloved friends of ours. They are a blessing to us and they're a blessing. I know that they would say that because they've come here and they said that they would stand with us. Okay, Jeremy, Ari, where are we now? So this is the top of the mountain. Uh -huh. And according to Jewish law, on the top of a mountain, you need to build a structure that's dedicated to the God Most High. Mm -hmm. And so this is our house of prayer, and it's taken us seven years to build. I consider this place the diamond in the crown of everything we've done, possibly the diamond in the crown of, of Judea, right? This is the, the soul of our place, is really right here. What's so beautiful is that, you know, we are surrounded by many different types of people, but the mattresses that you see here and the pillows in our house of prayer was donated to us by the Muslim Arab village right down here. They so much appreciated us coming here because when we came here, we repaved the roads that lead to their village as well. Police officers are now patrolling down the roads, making sure people are driving safer. We've been a blessing of this place. One of the most important elements of this place is, as we were talking about before, the words of the prophets, that when we return to the land, God will remove from us a heart of stone and put within us a heart of flesh and circumcise our hearts. In addition to the house of prayer, the farm includes several homes, a retreat center in the making, hundreds of trees, and a vineyard. They also host an online Bible study called the Land of Israel Fellowship. 
Throughout the building, the Book of Amos serves as their blueprint. Jeremy, Ari, we're here on a, a, a hillside, but you see this as prophecy coming to life, is that right? Yeah, I mean, this is this is prophecy coming to life. There's a, a village over there called Ma'ale Amos. This is undoubtedly, irrefutably, the very land in which the prophet Amos had his prophecy. Right, he was actually a cowboy, right? And so his prophecy was in these mountains. And the last three verses, of his prophecy, he says, I'll return the exiles of my people, and they will uh, rebuild desolate cities, and they will plant vineyards and drink their wine, and they will plant gardens and eat their fruit, and I will plant them upon their land, and they'll never be uprooted again. And so here we have vineyards right in the very land in which he prophesies. Amos was in these mountains here, and he had this vision that there would be rebuilt cities and vineyards and fruit trees. And then I wonder, I mean, this building that's being built here and this vineyard that's planted here, was this exactly what he saw? But we built it with the inspired words. He guided us to plant that. Chapter 8 of the book of Amos, I think, summarizes our whole mission here. If you want to know what is our business plan, the book of Amos. There will be a hunger in the land and the hunger will not be for bread, and the thirst will not be for water, but to hear the words of Hashem. The retreat center and the house of prayer, everything we're doing is to satisfy this hunger that isn't for bread, and the thirst is not for water, but to hear the words of God. And the words of God are echoing from the mountains of Judea to the entire world. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, The Aragod Farm, Judea. The words of God becoming real, becoming reality, becoming flesh and dwelling among us, Israel becoming a light to the nation, showing us all how we can all live together in peace and in harmony, uh, being a light to all of us, showing us the way. What a wonderful story. What a wonderful fulfillment of biblical prophecy.